Hi everybody, Colin Anderson here. I'm going to do a walkthrough on a shot I did a few months ago. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is go through the layers uh, one by one and show you how it was created. Um, so here we have the shot overall. Um, I'll show you guys close up what it looks like and then we'll go through and break it all down individually and I'll show you how it was created. So basically there's where we're at. Okay. Alright. You'll notice I'm still using Photoshop 5. No particular reason. I just haven't got around to upgrading to 6. Um, I will do shortly, but I just haven't got around to it as of yet. Um, five seems to do everything I need, but I guess it's time for me to do the upgrade. Okay, so let me call up the Photoshop document. All right, let me get rid of that one. Uh, don't save. All right, so here's the bottom layer right here. Um, this is the first layer that I'm going to start showing you guys. And basically what this is, is just a mottled green background. Um, basically it's just a, a, a texture I'm going to use that everything's going to lay on top. It just adds a little bit of variety to the shot, gives a little bit more depth. And um, what I've done is put a cloud on top of it right here. So this shot here is just basically a sunset shot. And what I've done is stick it in overlay mode right here. And what happens here is some of the texture shows through so you get kind of an interesting effect. What I've done now is put a second cloud on top and this one is set to multiply. So check it out. And I've also masked a bit of the bottom away around here because I think once everything's um, all the layers are on you'll see that this texture actually shows through a little bit and adds just a little bit more dimension to the shot. Alright, so I'll put that back on multiply. And on here I've got a levels adjustment and I'm just basically darkening it down <coughs> before adding another uh, hue saturation adjustment. And all I've done here is just dropped all the saturation down to 100, minus 100. So it's totally black and white. You know, like that. Okay, get rid of that. Now the next section I'm going to show you guys is the trees. Um, there's quite a few on here you'll see. If I switch all these on, you'll see how many I've added. Again, I'm just adding it on to make a bit more depth to the shot. Now, the tree was actually created in um, 3D. Um, if I call it up, it actually is a tree. If I pull out here, I'm in, I'm in a Sima 4D. So if I pull out here, you'll see that is in fact a real tree. Well, a virtual tree. Great. And you spin around, you can see it. I can come from different angles. That's the beauty of 3D. I can get any place I want in the tree. So what I've done here is just come in and taken the top of the branches. So the beauty of 3D is I don't have to um, do a mask for the branches. What happens is I export this out as a TIFF file, high resolution, and it comes with a mask. So once I open up that file, all I do is activate the mask and I can drop the trees straight on to my scene, saving me having to cut the trees out individually. Now, another way to do this is if you're in the studio, you could get some, um, uh, I think they're called tortured, tortured willows. And if you go to a flower shop, you can actually buy them. And I think you can get them in white, but you can definitely get them in brown and black and you can actually spray paint them if you want and what I would do is shoot them on a black background, light them, and this way you put the black background so it's somewhat easier to extract them out of the background. Okay, so there's my branches again. As you can see, they're just all layered up one by one, just building up that density. Now, if I go to the next layer, I'm gonna switch on um, Sasha the model and I'll just put all these on so you can see what's happening. All these on. And okay, that's enough for the time being. Uh, no, that's just okay. So um, 
the way I've done this is that the head the headpiece um, looked fantastic when we got it in the studio. The only problem I've had with it was it looked a little bit um, I don't know showgirl Las Vegas looking. So I wanted to make it more tribal looking. So the way I did this was adding a few things onto it like feathers and extra horns and stuff. Um, I'll let me go through the let me go through the feathers first and I'll show you how to do this. I only had one feather and the way I did this was to um, treat each feather individually to make them look like they weren't step and repeated. The problem with something like this, if you use the same feather, it looks very, well, like I said, step and repeated, um, very clone looking. So if I just pull this feather out here, I'll, sh no. Pull this one out here and just show you guys what's happening. All right, so this is what we can do. To make each feather look a bit different, what I've done is I've used the same feather and added a pattern on top. So if I put adjustment a layer above it right here, you'll see, and set this to multiply. Now, if you hold down option, you'll see this little lock comes up. So what that means is you're only um, affecting the uh, layer directly below it. So if I get a black brush and I paint onto this, you'll see what's happening. See? You notice it's only inside the feather. Really cool. As opposed to trying to mask it. So if I do it like that with it unlinked, see it does that? It's not cool. So if I hold down Option, wait for that little lock icon to appear, click on that, and now it's only affected the top of the feather. Okay, so it's on Multiply, and now what I'm going to do is just adjust the fill. Maybe put it on something like 77%. That's great. So what you can do for each feather is just paint in your own little pattern on each one, and this way each feather looks a bit different. And if you want to change the, um, the feather some more, you can come in with the eraser, or you can do a mask. I'm just going to use the eraser to make it easy here, and maybe I'll use something like something with a bit more of a ruffled edge, if that's a word. All right, so the flow I'm going to do quite low. I'm going to do a flow about, oh, I don't know, 10%. But if I come in nice and close, I might go 200%. And what I'm going to do is just eat away at the edges here. So maybe a bit smaller, or maybe a bit bigger, just like that. See, just what I'm doing is just rubbing it away very slightly. Hold, and if you want to make it a bit more more of a harder edge like that. So if you do this to every feather, what you do is end up with a bunch of feathers that aren't exactly the same. Now I like using the opacity on about 10% because as you know, feathers aren't totally solid on the edges. They kind of lighten off to where the end of the feather gets um, uh, towards the edge. It's probably not the best example, but you know what I mean here, just like that. Come in here, 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 here that, like that, like that, and like that. See? Really quick, really quick to do, and you can do that for every feather, and you don't spend too much time, and you don't get that step and repeated uh, Photoshop clone look, which can look really fake. And doing it that easy, there's no reason why you should do it um, any other way. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of that feather. We don't need it anymore. So then I put it inside a folder called left feathers and there they are. Just I uh, duplicated that folder, uh, named it right feathers and I just basically grabbed it and transformed the whole folder to the other side and I just went back and worked on each feather individually. So we got two sets of feathers that look somewhat different. Okay so what we're going to look at next is the blood my favorite part. All right, I love doing blood. Okay, blood. Now the best way to do blood is get a new layer um, and set it to multiply like that. All right, go up to here, pick a red, pick a red um, quite dark. I usually go you know, right about there. I'll give that a go. Get a brush, 
Again, I might use something a bit. I'll look for the sake of the for the sake of this. I'll just use a brush like that. All right. Uh, the opacity try about I don't know um, 60 percent. It doesn't really matter. Let me get a bigger brush. Okay, so you go something like that, right? Paint it in. Now to get that this look like you see it here, what you can do is get the smudge tool. Um, I'll go make that hardest a bit harder and by smudging it you can get this type of look. Now let's up that strength to about say about maybe 70. Yeah. So you can go in like that and go into it too. So you can go like like that and almost look I mean you can almost make like veins, you know, like pull it out if you want to, but just go you gotta really work it a lot. And go into it, go like that. It's almost got a smudge effect. It can almost look like bruising as well, which is kind of cool. So let's get a bit of a yeah. See, so you can make it go almost like it's you know like little drips of blood are forming, and you know don't go just out. Go back into it like that. See, just like that, and just a smudging look gives you that effect of blood like that and also you can experiment with different brushes um, if I go something like this this probably be a bit maybe a, yeah so again it's just working like that and to add a bit more I may put another layer a layer above it multiply and you can even go in here and just maybe get a brush like that. You've got to play around with these things a bit. Yeah, it's too strong. Let's knock the opacity down to about, say, 15. Yeah, see? Then you can sort of get like almost like a clotting effect at the edges. And get your smudge tool and, you, and just keep working it and working it and working it. And you'll start, see, now if I push that into there, just gives you like a little bit of extra depth to the blood. Let me go back up in here and just give maybe just put a little bit in like that. Smudge it around like that. Down, down. Something like that. No, look, this isn't the best blood I've done, but it's kind of those things you gotta you know, really work on and just keep finessing. There's no real secret to it. You just got to keep working away at it. Yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on it because basically you get the idea. So that's kind of what's happening there. Um, also, you want to play with the coloring. Get the blood layer and just play with your levels. If you just push that up a bit, you're going to darken it like that. See, if you're thinking that's a bit light, you know, push it up like that. I push up this end. I don't play the middle one too much. It's usually just the ends. And you get what uh, the type of darkness that you're after. All right. You can also get blood brushes, uh, splatter brushes, uh, which I've used down in here. You can make things life a bit easier. You can make your own splatter brushes. I've done that in the past. Um, as you can see, I've got a ton of brushes. So here's my splatter brushes. So this one's quite big and just go on, uh, go to pa a flow of about a hundred oops wrong layer go back up here and you know something like that once you get that you then you can even go in and then start your smudging like that see it gives you that nice type of like bleeding into the edges smudging you know effect like that. Go remember, work back into it, not just out, but in. And then keep working on layers and layers and layers. Go back, put a new brush, a bit harder, a bit smaller, and just get a bit of darkness. Even put on, like I said before, put on a new layer. And, okay. And, you know, do something like that. All right. That's all I'm going to spend on the blood layer. 
Um, what's next? Okay, the eyes. Quickly on the eyes. Have a look at this. All right, really simple. Um, first thing I want to do is pop the eyes out. Do that is I basically just get a uh, adjustment layer levels. I call that up. You'll see I've cranked probably in here. So if I pull it up to extreme, you're going to see what I've done. Don't need that much because it looks really creepy. So I'll go to back to what I had it. To about there, okay? Um, I'll show you the mask. Of course, I've masked these off. So if you can see, I've painted away using a white brush, leaving the whites exposed and covering up the pupils because I don't want the pupils to be um, light. I just want the whites of the eyes to be showing through. If you want to adjust this mask, it's a bit strong and you want to see what's happening underneath it, just double, double click that area there. You'll see 100% opacity come up. Just tweak that down to say, you know, 70% and then you get something like that so you can see what's going on. All right. Um, above that, I uh, did another mask and I just basically got the uh, hue saturation and I just push this over to the left and that gives me a nice blue eye. Again, using the mask, um, just painted just inside the uh, around the pupil area. There's a technical term for that. I don't know what it is, so that's what I'm calling it. Uh, white. See here, I put another adjustment layer above that. Set to overlay, and I've just painted white in, just in the corners here, like that, and in there. I think. Let me just undo that. But that's basically what I've done there. Really simple. Um, if you feel it's too strong, just get your fill and knock it down a bit. I like it at 100, so that's fine. Did another one on top, and what I've done this time is just gone just inside the eyes, just to make that blue pop a little bit more so our eyes stand out. Now, I've done these little uh, sparkle highlights. Um, I'll show you a bit later how to do that uh, when I do the sword. I've done this highlight of the sword, and... Um, I'll come back to that. See that there? That and that? I'll show you how to do that in a second. What I basically did was did this technique on the uh, on the eyes, but I'll get to that a bit later. But just repeat that technique to finish off the eyes. Um, okay, so back to the headdress, the horns. What I did is, again, like I said before, this headdress was looking a bit Vegas to me, so I wanted to make it more tribal. So I decided to get these horns up here and I basically just did a marquee. Oops, probably like that. All right. And I just copied that and drug it down here and I just cloned away, you know, this area in here. I just cloned that away using this texture in here. And what I did once I had it down here, I just used the liquify tool. And once you do that, you can reshape the, um, the horns a bit more. So, if I just grab a horn here, if I pull it out of the side, there should be one here somewhere. Okay, that's on an overlay. Well, let me just see if I can grab another one. I'll actually grab the one I've used here. Oh, see, I've done that overlay mode, so... Um, all right, let me, I'll show you what I've done. I'll check that. So just draw a marquee around the area you want to work on. Go up to your filter, hit liquify. Come in here, and basically to reshape the horn, it's, um, oh, look, I do a brush setting of about 100, I guess that's fine. Uh, the brush density, 47, brush pressure, 38, not too important. Play around with what you like, and uh, settle on something that's going to work best for you. So, again, shaping the horn, it's just moving it in like this. And what I'm basically doing here is just trying to change the shape from the top horn above it, because I don't want it to look like it's being obviously cloned. So by, di by doing this, I can just change the shape up a bit so it actually looks like a different set of horns. And you can sharpen it a bit more, extend it, like that. And this is a tool everybody uses to make models skinny and to change bone structure and all that other good stuff that we get in trouble for doing. Okay, cancel. There we go. So that's it right there. Easy. So horn one. 
sorry, horn one. Whoops. Let me get you a layer here. Uh, this probably won't work. No, sorry. I'm just going off on a tangent. Okay, so horn one. Oh my god, what's going on? I got a marquee open, I think. Okay, there we go. So, horn one. Copied, put down to here, and we now have horn two, and we've liquefied it to change the shape. Same thing over here, same horn here. Um, there we go, that's better. Brought the horn from here to here, and uh, liquefied it and change the shape, got rid of all this crap, all those little antlers up here, and that's basically what we got. It looks like a football game. Okay, dump that for a second, and also I did just for a bit of shaping is I just got in here with a brush and painted in some shadows because, you know, you're getting, you'd probably be getting shadow from the top headdress coming down, so if you don't, if I take that shadowing layer off here, you're going to notice it looks a bit stark. So I'll just pan those in. Again, using this technique <coughs> of the option to link just the bottom layer I want to affect. Did that. <coughs> and just panned it in like this. Just like that. You can also use levels. I just did um, painting for some reason. Doesn't really matter. As long as you get there in the end. Okay, so that's the horns. Let's move up a bit. Where are we at? Okay, and I think we're at two. Okay, that's Sasha. All right. Aha, now the hair. Another thing I want to touch on is her hair. Whoops. Right here. Okay, so Sasha's hair. Sasha's got really long hair. It probably comes down to around her waist. Um, what I did is, uh, we were shot this, I was thinking about putting a wind machine on her, and the problem was that it was blowing all the feathers, these feathers up here, and I was really scared of it blowing the headdress off, because it was really hard to, hard for it to balance on Sasha's head, so I did also didn't want the, these um, feathers to be blowing to the side, I wanted to be quite static, I wanted to keep the original shape of the, uh, of the headdress. So I decided we would do the um, the hair separately. Now the way we did this to get the hair blowing is we just got Sasha to throw her head back and uh, we try to do is capture the hair in mid-flight like that. Um, a little quick thing to do when you're tr doing something like this try to get the hair inside the seamless. As you can see we caught it on the outside which not devastating, but it's a bit of a pain in the ass when you've got to extract it. You want as clean of background as possible. Also, you'll notice I've got this little brown color head, bare head on the background. When you're doing something like this, try to keep your background around one stop brighter than your subject. This way you get a nice clean white and avoid this type of stuff like that. Yeah? And this type of stuff like that. And this type of stuff like that. That's not cool. That makes it hard to extract out. So don't do what I just did. All right. Okay. So to pull this uh, this this hair out of the background, what you can do really quickly is get a marquee, and what I'm going to do is draw a selection just around the hair. All I need is the hair don't need Sasha's face at this point and there we go like that okay so like that command J takes a copy of that selection put it up here and I'm going to stick it on a great background to show you um, so you can see a bit easier what's going to happen next all right so load the selection um, just hit command or Apple and it'll load the selection all right go up to select color range what we want to do now is basically pick on the white. So go in here. Again, you can do this through channels. I'm just going to do it through um, just on the original layer because 
it's enough information here where I don't need to go through channels. So again here, as you tweak this up and down, you're getting more contrast in the shot. So what I want is as much solid black as possible. So maybe something around there. It doesn't have to be too accurate at this stage because this technique I want to show you, you can get away with murder. Okay, looks good? Okay. So now we've got happening now is the white is selected. Now what you want to do is inverse this selection. So quick command is go shift command I. And now what happened is it's inversed. Or you can go select inverse right here and that now inverses a selection. So now the actual hair is what's selected. Alright, so hit delete. Oh my god. I just inversed it by mistake. Okay, let me now it's inverse, sorry. Okay. Don't worry about feathering at this stage. You can feather it. If you want to feather it, go ahead. Uh maybe like I usually feather it 0 0.5, 0 0.3, depending on what it is. Uh I'll go five. Again, you don't have to do this. It's not really crucial at this stage. Okay, delete. You can load it as a mask if you're really keen on doing that, but I'm not going to worry about the stage. Okay, so there we go. Command delete or deselect. There's our hair. All right. It's a really, really, really crappy selection. Looks all right there, but if I show you quickly on a dark background, you're going to go, holy crap, that's really bad. And it is. But for the technique we're doing here, you can get away with a crappy selection. I'll show you why. And I'll show you how to fix it really quickly. All right, let me put that away. We don't need that. So basically, that's that's the uh, that's the hair right there. So now, if I pull this out, you'll see what's going on a bit more. All right, so we pull it out there. There it is, right? Back in. Voila. Now, just to give it a bit more shape, um, what I'm going to do is hit Command T for transform and go to warp. Now the warp, what you can do is just grab the edges and maybe give it a bit more of a swish with the hair, pull it in there, you know, just do nice little things like this, just to give it a bit more shape, bit of interest if you're not happy with the shape of it. You can also use liquify, but in this case I'm just going to use the warp tool because it just gives me a bit e easier control and I can see exactly what's happening on the layer. Okay, cool. All right. One more thing I've done here is I've set this to multiply. Now, the reason I've done this, I'll just show you quickly, nice and close. All right, have a look here. That's a multiply at the moment. Now, if I put that onto normal, there comes our crappy mask again. See all the white and all that in there? That really sucks. But by going to multiply, what you basically are doing is making all the white go totally transparent. Really cool technique and works fantastic for things like this. Okay, let me just put that hair back into place. All right, and also what I've done is I've got the hue saturation and I've just basically, I'll call that up there, I've just desaturated a bit because if you go to the normal, it was a bit red, said to uh, multiply, it tends to show color is a bit funky, so um, I just desaturated. What I'm trying to do basically is match the back hair to Sasha's front. That's all I'm doing. All right. Um, also, what I did put an adjustment layer above that, and I'm just tweaking it here by um, increasing. So you watch what I do. I do that. It's just, it's just, it's just darkening it up. That's all it is. Just so you're trying to match it. Go this way if you want to bring more, make the hair a bit lighter. Right there seems about good. I'm happy with. All right, cool. All right. Now let's see what else we got. Such okay. And again, don't forget that technique. See my lock come up. We were just with these the hue, saturation, and the levels. We're just trying to affect the hair, nothing else. On link those, we're gonna get the whole background being affected, which isn't good. There we go. So just the hair, just affecting the hair, and you can put as many as you want on top of each other. Remember, you know. Long, all you, all as many as you need to get the job done. All right, let me close that off. I think it's pretty good for Sasha now. Um, now it's just a basic layer. I won't mention that. I'll just show you quickly. So what I've done here, just an adjustment layer. 
now, sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. What I want to show you too, this is another really important thing. You're probably looking at this headdress and going, how do you select something that fine out of a background? Because if you look at that close up, that is mighty fine selection. I mean, it's perfect. Now, I just want to tell you, I didn't actually do that. Another secret here. What you do, now I'll see if I've got that layer somewhere here. And I can show you the original file. I uh, don't have it. All right. So again, Sasha was shot on black for the um, for the headdress, and the reason I did this is I knew I was going to be um, having to put this headdress on a background. If I used a white background, I wouldn't be able to select the headdress out of it because it's just white on white, and you're not going to see anything. So by using a black background, I can easily um, drop the background out, and it's kind of similar to the way I did the hair. Um, if I just navigate, oops, you If I just navigate to the headdress, let me just find it. Oh, I've got so many layers, that's the only problem. Sasha, final head. Here we go. Okay, so here's the headdress. If you look at the layer here, you can see the black behind it. If I set that to normal you're going to see what's happening. So there's a the headdress on black. Now the way you do this is you I cut Sasha out separately. So that's there's my Sasha selection, right? So it's a bit crappy in here and around there, it doesn't matter because all I want to do is cut the separate the feathers from the headdress, stick it behind Sasha, right? Oops. And what you do now is you set this to screen. And by setting it to screen, it almost works like the hair did with multiply. Screen makes everything black totally disappear, but leaves the white. It doesn't work on everything, but things like this, it's really easy fix and really quick to do. And it's perfect. Again, it's just a really wide selection around it. Doesn't as long as you keep the feathers intact, you know, you just get your marquee and draw it all the way around the headdress like that, and you just uh, command J it, put it on top, and set it to screen, and you're good to go. All right, so screen, and there we have perfect selection. Also, I just want to talk quickly about Sasha's skin tones. So I'm going for like a nice princess here. So I want to go for kind of a washed out type of look or very pale. Basically what you do is get um, Sasha layer duplicated and let me just show you. So this is a normal at 100%. So it looks kind of scary but that's okay. So you duplicate it, set it to um, totally desaturate it. So command uh, U pull the saturation all the way down so we get totally black and white set it to screen and you get this really pasty white look set it to 50% because that's a bit too strong 100 so 50 should be about good I think I had around 50 and if you want to bring back in some detail put a mask there and paint in black so you know things like um, you know the lips for instance you want those nice and bright so if I just show you, oops, hold on. So, do zero. So if it's like that, it's a bit too pale. So what I'm doing is going back in there and just darkening all the stuff. I want to have a bit more contrast, like you know, lips, maybe nostrils, um, eyes, things like that. Also, anything too really white, like in here, I don't particularly want to have that burnt out. And this technique tends to burn stuff out. If, you, if I switch that off, see it's a bit, a bit too bright. By painting into it with a black brush like that, you bring just a bit of detail back into it. Really cool, complete control. And if you go overboard, use your white brush and you can paint the white back in. So it's totally non-destructive. So you can do it a million times and not affect the layer. Okay, now quickly on to Sasha's eyelashes. Um, what I did here is I just wanted some extra length to the eyelash. The way to do this is get a, a, a brush, go fairly hard, 
around maybe 70 percent get really small I'm saying like maybe maybe even I'd go try two pixels let me just give you a new layer and what you want to do is get a black brush uh, get your flow going at maybe 40 percent might go less than that but we'll start off at 40 so just like a little flick like that yeah it's too strong I think let's go let's go try 20 percent all right so like that like that like that like that and like that all right work into it work into it work into it okay it looks really crappy at the moment but what you can do is get and get the eraser really hard edge go small get your hardness really high maybe 82 get this down to quite low maybe four pixels and what you can do is just sharpen it up like that just nice and sharp so what you're doing is just nailing off the ends in here like that too just like that clean it up just like that okay do kind of dupe those up a couple times make two maybe make this one a little bit smaller like that you know something like that might want to spend more time than I'm doing it maybe like you know something like that and I'll show you one of the ones I did properly so here it is here yeah so I've just duplicated them and joined them and just laid them um, onto the eyelash and if you want to make a second one maybe you want to go darker I went quite dark in there and probably used a harder brush yeah so if I went a bit dark if I just duplicate that layer it's gonna go darker like that maybe use a I was using a flow about three percent maybe use your flow a bit higher and it'll be a bit stronger so if just by duplicating the layer I've actually got it back to more of a solid color and what I might do is go in here and just you know just sharpen the edges like that something like that and you get the idea anyway um, just get rid of that and get rid of that and if you have a look at this eyelash here if I pull that out you'll see like that and what I've done is I've duplicated that one there and all I've done is shrunk it down and added a few more on the inside of her eye like in there so you see it's the same same uh, shape just all just transformed it down and add them up into the more into the middle of the eye okay cool all right so that's eyelashes don't have to do it but it's just an added effect um, okay back to the trees so again got another tree layer I stuck this one on front and I've just enlarged it simple and did a gouache and blur um, just to make it look like it's just in front of the camera and this gives the picture a little bit more depth I think got some snow snow really quickly um, to snow just sort of get, getting lost okay it's do snow get a brush there's a bunch of ways to do it but I'll show you the probably the simplest way uh, get a um, hardness at about 55 size start off maybe about 17 and just get your flow at maybe about let's go 100 like that okay like that and just go crazy all right so do that lots of times now what you do is get your blur gouache and blur and just tap those up a bit just so we get this type of look here yeah all right something like that okay and set it to overlay gets more of a transparent look it's quite subtle whoopsie days um, it's quite subtle like that and just build it up so got that layer there uh, duplicate it and what you do is just enlarge it and now you're getting snow at different um, distances from the lens so that one probably be closer get the original and you can make it smaller you know 
go up and down different sizes the more the better and like that and just like that and just do it all over the place and that's how you do your snow really easy doesn't have to be complicating all the time and set to overlay okay quickly um, I felt this bottom of the shot was a bit dark um, so I lightened it up now you can do this through levels but I kind of like this effect because it, to me it looks more like a smog or a fog coming up. Um, if you use levels, it's a bit more, well, it's more of a solid, no depth to it. So get a big brush, you know, say about that big. Uh, get your flow, go really low, 10%. And what I do, if I just click that off, and just go like this. So you didn't hear. Just going really low, just like that. Just tapping, tap, 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 like that. Yeah. So again, you're getting this. It's not very uniform. It's kind of all the place, like smog would be. It's going to be dark in some areas, lighter in others. And just gives it a little bit more interest. Again, it's got that depth. I think the secret to all this type of stuff is giving shots a bit of depth, so things don't look too flat. And this is a really good way to do it. Yep, okay, I'll go back to my original because it's better. Well, actually, I don't mind the new one. So anyway, that's how you do it. It feels a bit strong. There's my original ones at 100%, maybe too strong. Just tap the fill back to what you like. I think I have a 55, like that. Yep, even if you want to do, do another one above if you want, just to, you know. Okay, do, use your layers as much as possible. Don't work too much on one layer. Because if you make a mistake, you don't have to start a game. You just go, okay, well, that layer sucks, so be gone. And you're good to go. Okay, now the, uh, the shiny thing on the sword. Technical term. Uh, to do this, really easy. New layer. Let's go something like that. Draw a marquee. Fill it with black. That's not a solid black, I don't think. A solid black. No. Yep. Okay. Activate the marquee. Go to filter, render, uh, lens flare. So I've used 105 prime, uh, 83, pretty good. Stick in the middle. Cool. All right. Now go up to your filter. Go to blur, gouache, and blur, and what you're gonna do is just blur that sucker out to about there. Yeah. Now, set it to. Well, again, you want this black to disappear. You don't want the black in it because you want it to look like a glowing thing. So screen and stick it there. All right, like that. Now hit your levels. What you want to do is pop this sucker up a bit. So grab grab on this one on the and just on the level, crank it to the right, or grab the one on the right, crank it to the left. We're just trying to get like a glowing ball thing happening here. Increase the contrast. Just knock this one over just a tad. So we got something like that going. Cool. Okay. Now adding a bit of color. Command B for color balance. Just pull your blues up like that. There we go. Beautiful. Yep. All right. If I go back to normal, what I might do is get an eraser or a mask. Look, I'll show. I'll do a mask just because that's a proper way to do it. Mask, little moon icon down here. Black brush and just like that. Um, put the opacity a bit higher. So you just try and get rid of this hard edge. Just like that. Yeah. Draw a marquee if you want. I uh, can do a circular marquee. I'm just doing it this way. Um, screen, something like that. Now that ball's a bit hard. Nothing worse than hard balls. So we'll go filter, blur, gouachin, and we'll just give it a bit more. That's better. You don't want it too solid. Okay, now what we're going to do is make these little streaky things right there. All right. Oops, got my balls. Hold on. Right there. All right, to do that, let me just get rid of this layer here. I don't need that anymore. 
to do that, get this layer here, that's our star glowy ball layer, and copy it like that. Go up to transform, just hit command T, and what you want to do is squash it. Just like that. See what happens? You got this type of thing happening. Just like that. Cool. And if you want to, you can even go filter, blur, motion blur, and go 90%, and you can even stretch it out even more if you want, like that. See? It extends it down. Don't have to do that, just another technique. If you want to increase the contrast, just hit levels and crank it up here, just like that. Twack, twack, and maybe over here just to. You'll notice the white makes it bigger or thickens it up to the contrast, and black actually brings it down again. Notice the edges sort of disappear. That should be fine, right? Like that. Okay, good. Um, transform, just spin that mother into place like that and you're good to go. Duplicate it and you've got two like that. Sweet. Might even want to, uh, that's a bit thick, you might want to thin it down even more but you get the gist of the idea. Okay, I also, yep, and it always said to linear linear dodge add. So you want that black to drop out. I mean, if you set the screen, you'll see what happens. It's not as strong. It's a bit, you know, weak. Um, linear dodge will just pump it up. The more contrast, so it's easier to see. Okay, now we'll get into the coloring. Really simple coloring. First one is just the level. So what I'm doing here is cranking on the levels again, and I'm just pulling up the right handle here. All I'm trying to do is get nice bright whites. That's all I'm doing. I um, actually masked a bit out. It was a bit too bright. Um, so I load a mask and again as usual with a black brush just pulling back on these areas here. You can see where what's green. That's actually where I've painted to pull back some of the detail in. I'll just show you quickly. Um, so if I'm noticing in here it's a bit bright, I'll just paint like that, you know, so you get the idea. Something like that. All right, I'll undo that because it doesn't look very good. Yeah, probably even on pop of a lip here, you could probably pull that back a touch too. That ball's a bit bright here too. Maybe pop that down. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I might adjust it through here. Maybe pop the opacity on the ball to about here. Yep. Okay, so now we're adding a bit of color. Blue. Everybody makes fun of me because I use blue a lot, but I like blue. All right. And plus, she's a snow princess, so she should be blue. It's nice and cold. Uh, nothing too technical. Bit of blue. Um, plus 19. Bit of green. Bit of cyan. You get that kind of icy color. Uh, levels. Um, what I'm trying to do is make the shot really high key. And what I do with something like this is I'm trying to almost look, look like a foggy effect, which is something you never want to do in photography as a rule. But here it works good. I mean, I want that snow blindness type of look. So what I've done is I've left these two levels, handles on either end the same. And I've just pulled the middle one, which sort of affects the mid-tones or the middle tones in here. So it just gives a blanket whiteness to the whole shot. Finally, I've just put a hue saturation layer above it, and I've set it to soft light. And what this does is it builds up the contrast. So your blacks get a bit stronger, your whites a bit whiter. Um, so go to your saturation, just master, put all the way to 100, minus 100, which makes it totally black and white. Set it to soft light. Uh, if I set it to normal, obviously it's going to be black and white. Set to soft light, and you're going to see everything picks up a bit. The blacks go a bit more black, and everything pops up. And it's just a nice high contrast look. And I also did the fill at 42. I think that's a bit strong. I mean, everything's, you can see in here, it's getting burnout, burnout, face is burning out. It's looking really crappy. So 42 is a nice balance. This saves me having to go in and mask her face and paint highlights back in and 
stuff like that. Um, up here, really simple. Just painted black up in here like that. Use levels to do this. I used uh, just used a black brush, painted it in. Really light, gain 10%. Just like that. Just so you get a bit of edge darkness. It's not crucial, but I guess it adds a, you know, adds a bit to the shot. Yep. And this isn't really anything that layer there. Just I felt if you look closely in here, I was just darkening this in here. I was getting a bit transparent, right in here. I click that off. You'll see it's just really finessing type of stuff. That's not really going to make much difference to you guys. Like that. And basically that's the shot. Um, I think I've covered everything. I uh, just quickly want to talk about lighting. On this shot here, I used a uh, seven foot Photoflex uh, softbox to her right. And I used about a six foot uh, white fill card to her left. So you get this nice big pool of light on her. Um, I don't know if you might be able to see in her eyes. Yeah, it's actually an octagon. So if you look closely, you'll just see the octagon shape in here. And again, it's like I said, I think I said it's about two, three feet away from her and just angled slightly down, just slightly off center. Also, I had a, um, a second light from behind here hitting the headdress, just a bare flash um, with a, uh, I use a brown color um, flash, a scoro pack, and I think I had a, I can't remember what type of adapter. I just had a bare head with some type of reflector and I can't remember which one it is. Um, it doesn't have to be too precise as long as it's spilling on the background. It's not overly strong. You can't actually see it on her body, but it is actually just outlining the headdress so it pops a bit more. And that is basically it. Done. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll talk to you next time.